Welcome to my channel. In the first two parts, we covered the uh, essentials of how aircrafts fly. Uh, we covered the four forces uh, that act uh, on an aircraft. And in the second uh, video, we covered uh, the uh, uh, instruments, uh, the, the, the outside instruments that are used in an aircraft uh, to control and have the aircraft fly straight. In this video, uh, we will cover uh, uh, hands-on uh, training on how to uh, manage a stall. So we will cover what stall uh, is about and how to uh, handle it during flight. Uh, this is very essential uh, part of any uh, training for pilots to know what the stall is because a stall may happen and if it happens, it is catastrophic. <laughs> and it may lead to a very dangerous uh, you know, uh, a situation for an aircraft uh, that, of course, uh, all pilots must be trained to handle such situations. Now, uh, we have, of course, our uh, student pilot uh, with us here today. And very important uh, for you uh, to know that this uh, training today uh, is slightly dangerous and risky because we will stall an aircraft and you will learn how to recover it after uh, stalling. So are you okay with that? You may shake your uh, head if you uh, are fine. Oh yeah, that's okay. Thank you for the confirmation. Good, so let's begin. Uh, what we will do, uh, we will take off and in the sky we will uh, explain what the stall is about and cause this aircraft to stall and recover it. I hope uh, nothing happens because these acts are normally dangerous uh, and uh, they require certified pilots. So please don't attempt to do this even if you are flying in a simulator uh, because they can be dangerous. No, I'm kidding. All right, so let's uh, start this aircraft fast. So we have uh, the, uh, you know, the gas uh, to the first one. So I will not explain too much because we have done this uh, starting a uh, couple of times and we turn the batteries uh, on and we turn on the fuel pump we put the mixture to full and uh, we make sure the handbrake is uh, on it's on already and we clear bra yeah yeah engine is on okay now, this light, I don't know why it didn't work last time. It's called the navigation light, which is essential for us even to turn it on before we get into the flight. And it is this light. So as you can see, it's off now. Let us... Come on, why it's not working? Uh... I don't know. Maybe I'm missing something. Oh, this is the anti-collision light. Ah, so it's a part of the anti-collision light. Normally, in a different implementation, another aircraft it just comes up by uh, this. Okay, so nice. Uh, I think the aircraft is now ready. Uh, let's. Sorry, we are coming from your uh, behind, and let's turn on the uh, <laughs> the system for navigation. Okay, now. Uh, this is called the transponder and it transmits uh, uh, a signal to the uh, ATC uh, indicating our altitude so they will be able to see us on the radar. So this is a requirement before an aircraft leaves and uh, to turn on the, uh, this transponder and uh, they can decide on what to transmit. So now we are transmitting our altitude and this is the uh, frequency that is uh, that is uh, used in, in this part of the world. All right, so now we are uh, like last time in Auckland International Airport. Let's take off and talk about uh, the stall and we can also mention also the center of, of a gravity of an aircraft. Let's begin. Release the brake and 
normally when you start to increase the throttle, the aircraft has the tendency to move to the left, but you balance it using the rudders. This is to counter the force from the propeller. Okay, so we are climbing now uh, around 800 feet per minute. Let's raise the flap. In fact, yeah, we were not using flaps. It's slightly foggy today in uh, San Francisco. So, what is a stall? We will climb to 3,000 feet and start uh, the uh, rehearsal on how stall happens and how we recover. So while we are explaining what stall is, I'll try to maintain uh, a vertical speed of around 800 to 1,000, whatever. All right, so simple. An aircraft, if I put a pause now, this is nice. And then I go out. And then while the aircraft in the sky, I can come here and show you. While the aircraft in the sky, you, you see here, there is this, of course, the body of the uh, aircraft. I think I'm gonna lower slightly the volume of the aircraft. Yeah. Uh, so this body of the aircraft and the wings, you see this angle in here with the, uh, with the th this angle with the surface of the ground. This is called the angle of attack. Now, of course, as you can imagine from last, uh, you know, two videos, is when we uh, pull the uh, elevation trim uh, to point the nose up, we increase the angle of attack. Now, assume we keep increasing the angle of attack, and then we are getting an additional, uh, you know, lift. Until what we will continue to have additional lift, which is an increase in the force that that is acting on the aircraft up. And every design of an aircraft, there is always a limit. And this kind of aircraft, the angle is only and just 16 degrees. So once the angle of attack of the wing with this becomes 16 degrees, we get the maximum lift, so the aircraft will climb with the maximum inclination possible. Once we start to increase our, uh, our uh, angle of attack to more than 16 degrees, this starts now to act as a negative, and we will start to lose uh, lift. And we can continue to lose lift, and then immediately what can happen is, you remember when we spoke last time, we said the air flows above the wing faster than the air under the wing. Once the angle of attack, and this is what creates the, uh, the difference in the pressure. So there will be high pressure, uh, low under the wing, low pressure above the wing, and then it creates the lift. Now, once the angle of attack becomes more than, more than 16 degrees, the air will stop being able to move under the wing and this will be a very big problem because if the air does not move now the, the, there will be no pressure uh, to be formed under the wing and this will cause a very uh, dangerous situation because the aircraft now won't be able to fly and we get into a situation where the aircraft will start to fall off the sky and we call this issue a stall so the aircraft stalls so again, then, what is the stalling? The stalling is when the aircraft stop being able to fly, 
and uh, it falls out of the sky. Now, <laughs> interesting. Then how what, uh, how does a stall happens? We'll continue flying now. How does a stall happens? <laughs> Sorry. How does a stall happens? And how do we uh, recover out of the stall? Uh, a lot of uh, people who are into simulation, I'm sure, of course, pilots are so experienced and they know uh, they, they know a lot. This is their domain. But a lot of people assume that the, what causes this uh, stall is only the, uh, the the speed. So when an aircraft, for example, this aircraft, it cannot fly, it cannot fly with a speed lower than 50 knots. Now, why 50? Approximately not an exact, because this depends on the load and the configuration of the aircraft and also the density of the air and many elements, because it depends on the temperature in the air, etc., etc. So this is why uh, a typical angle of a stall for this aircraft is around, as we mentioned, 50 to 55 knots. So don't try to fly this aircraft you know, uh, with a speed uh, slower than 50 to 55 knots. This is fine. So now we will test this. We will fly this aircraft uh, below uh, 50 knots and we will see how it will stall. But the second, and this is what we will cover, and this is very, very interesting. The second, and this is the uh, maybe common and dangerous type of stall, is when we increase the angle of attack of the aircraft to more than 16 degrees. And in this case, the aircraft can stall at any speed. Uh -huh. So it's not only when the aircraft is slow, it can stall. It can still yet slow stall at any speed if the angle of attack the aircraft goes above uh, 16 degrees. So now let's begin with the first exercise. Now, what I'm... I'm flying now around 2,300. I will take it to around 2,500 uh, feet, the elevation. <laughs> Sorry. And what I will do to show you what I'm doing, of course, I will enable this. And I will cut the power. <laughs> so I will, I will reduce the throttle. And you notice now the aircraft tends to have the nose go down. But I will push this up so that I hold the aircraft. So I will try to hold it to go straight. Now I am completely holding it to the back full i cannot do more and now you notice something the airspeed has a dropped but the but the aircraft is stalling now you notice exactly what happened and this is what is really amazing about the simulators is a, a real pilot was saying this is the exact act of and this aircraft in the sky it starts to go nose down and then up of a sudden it goes slightly level up and then it goes down again. So now, as you can see, what's happening? Nothing. We are just, uh, because of the center of the gravity of the aircraft, the aircraft, this is referred to as, it stalls elegantly. What does it mean? It does not stall. Uh, what's happening, uh, it's so balanced. So it simply uh, points down a little bit and it starts to lose height and it continues to fly at around 60 knots. So as simply what, what it is, there, you know, I'm of course holding this completely up. So what it's doing is it's simply descending. So if you see it from outside, you see I'm holding this completely back. It's a very elegantly controlled flying. So this is why if you don't have an engine, <laughs> If you have an issue with your engine, you will be able still to hold the aircraft this way and descend with it. Great. So now let's put again the power back, climb, and demonstrate the... You notice now when I just put power, of course the aircraft will start to ascend. 
and let's turn left. Normally, when they are training uh, pilots, they avoid uh, flying above residential or uh, populated areas when they do this type of maneuvering and they select an area uh, so that they can do uh, emergency landings uh, in case they face into any issues. You notice I did not use the flaps the flaps won't change that much. Uh, of course, they impact the speed uh, based on which the stall may begin. But in this type of aircraft, the, uh, the flaps won't affect the, uh, the stalling behavior of this aircraft. Now, other aircrafts uh, stall in a completely different manner. They may witness something called spin so i will talk a little bit about it later on so the aircraft while it is stalling it might spin which means like <laughs> it goes in a rotation and this is happens when one of the wings especially the right one loses completely the lift but the left wing still has some so it keeps in a rotation and there is a special technique experienced pilots can recover an aircraft from this destiny which might go straight down to the ground and crash they use the rudder, they remove power, and they use the opposite rudder full. Uh, but of course, when, when the aircraft is doing such a behavior, uh, the people will be inside it. So they are spinning with the aircraft, and they need to be able to control this while the spinning takes place. All right, so now we are flying uh, around 100 knots, and we are around we will make it 3,000 feet and show you how if I increase the angle of attack we will have a real stall okay now we have still full power huh? so I'm, I will not remove the power but what I will do I will try to climb the aircraft the maximum like this and you notice now our vertical speed and this is what and this is what I'm talking about as a real stall <laughs> yeah it is dangerous we do it one more time. So you notice now there is something that can happen. And it's very dangerous. What is it? When you are stalling, you fall off the sky and your speed can go quickly fast. And that can tear out the aircraft and damage it and it will crash. So this is why you need to, you need to take uh, action and control the aircraft before the speed becomes very high yeah let's do it one more time if we crash <laughs> all right oh so you see the angle of attack is and now we are falling and then when the aircraft falls this time it was still a little bit like under control so you notice here we are falling down but we are not spinning right so this is to tell you that uh, f uh, you know stalling can happen uh, at any speed so this is why if you are coming to land look what may happen you are coming to land in an airport and up of a sudden you have high speed but you may feel like oh my my elevation is quite low you feel so afraid and then you try to take this the aircraft completely up by increasing the angle of attack way too high even though you have a speed but if you increase the angle of attack too high the aircraft stalls and then you fall short of the airport this can be a fatal error mistake 
while landing. Okay, now what impacts the uh, behavior of the stall? At the center of gravity, this is very important. What, where is the center of gravity inside such an aircraft? Is it here, 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 here? Of course, it's between, between these two points. Why? Because of the center of gravity and is in here, the aircraft cannot stand on the three wheels, then it will fall back. So the center of gravity is normally, uh, it is in, it's in here. And the closer to the front the center of gravity is, the more the stall behavior will be for the aircraft to, to go and to go down, nose down. Imagine the center of gravity is in here. When we are stalling, the, air, the aircraft tendency will be to go backward. And if you try to if you go backward, then it will be like near impossible to recover from the stall. That's why it is highly always a common practice for many, even commercial aircrafts, is to really make the center of gravity in the aircraft, you know, as close to the front as possible. But of course, not too much, because if the center of gravity is too much close to this point, then controlling the aircraft will be harder, you know. So this is why it has to be a balance. So the management of the center of gravity is a key element before taking off, and it determines the entire set of speeds for V1, V2, etc., etc., And in a commercial aircraft, based on the number of passengers uh, and the load that, that they have in the aircraft, they always calculate the center of gravity, and then they set some parameters accordingly so that they have a, a safe flight uh, uh, based on the exact center of gravity. Of course, the center of gravity is also uh, related to how much fuel they, they put. So this is why when they are flying, after some time, they will have uh, the center of gravity changes, and this is why they reconfigure the aircraft uh, differently for takeoff and uh, for landing. Great. So I think uh, that was a, a quick uh, chapter today about the stalling and the center of gravity. In the next chapter, we will get into something very exciting, and we will cover the six packs of the flying instruments so we will study each one of those the six packs are 10 2 3 4 5 6 these two are for navigation they are not considered as the core part of the six packs right i want to show you one thing before i finish this video what is this in here you see this part here what is this? This is a stall warning system. So there is a sensor inside this that measures the air speed uh, and the angle of attack of the aircraft. So once the air speed shows that there is uh, around 10 nautical miles close to 50, around 50, so when it senses that the air flying under the wing is below, let's say, 60 knots, it will beep. And this is what we have heard uh, when uh, we stole the aircraft uh, inside. Great. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, lesson. Yeah? Did you feel uh, afraid a little bit when we were stalling? Uh, yeah, he's saying, yeah, he's fine, uh, you know, because uh, the learning is key element and it's more important than the, the little bit of, uh, you know, uh, adrenaline that uh, that is coming out of uh, uh, this exercises great now we are gonna go land uh, and uh, I think uh, you can stay safe and stay tuned for the next chapter bye bye